Hello! Shuin here. I'm a carpenter working in Japan. Today, I'm building a Japanese cypress tokonoma in this 1.8 meter space. This time, I will make it elegant using Japanese cypress. I use only one Japanese ash as an accent, but the rest are Japanese cypress. First, I install a tatami yose under the tokonoma. It'll be a foundation for a tokonoma. The installation is the same as a shiki. I mark the tatami yose along the column with a carpenter square, then install it. The difference compared to the shiki is that you only see the front. It's an exposed wood that is slightly visible at the top and the front. I install it 50mm back from the pillar. It'll be a large tatami yose. I cut it now. I don't cut either mortise or tenon. I cut it straight and use a butt joint on both sides. It's good to replace the saw blade when cutting a large Japanese cypress like this. I cut the wood according to the markings on three sides and concave the wood center at the cut end. A miter saw only cuts straight, but a hand saw can concave the end. If the edge is concaving, the visible part of the shoulder will attach well. That's why I'm using a hand saw. I'll install this tatami yose 1cm higher than the tatami mat. I will install tokonoma style a little back from the pillow, so the area will be dusty when laying a carpet or a mat. This is why I intentionally raise it by 1cm. Now, I install it. I wet the pillar beforehand to prevent scratching since I will be sliding the tatami yose from the top. I sold it in place one step from above. Next, I cut the tokonoma style called tokogamachi. It's also called tokobuchi. I use it to make the front side cross grain and the top side straight grain. If I were installing it in the room where a Buddhist altar is placed, it would be the opposite. The small hand plane that I'm chamfering is called mendai. It's a hand plane that chamfers the corner with the same width. When chamfering large corners neatly, it's very useful to have this tool. I chamfer widely. I chamfer the top neatly at 45 degrees and the bottom at a gentle angle. The top front side will be widely chamfered. I don't know the origin of this shape, but it's been like this for a long time. The planer's blade was stalled this time. The shaving's shape looks like a rat's tail. Next, I install the tamabuchi. I purposely use a Japanese ash for it. As I make the entire tokonoma with Japanese cypress, it looks white. For that reason, I think it'd be good to use Japanese ash for the tamabuchi. Tamabuchi is a small piece of wood under the style, since it literally means ball edge in Japanese. The front will be finished with a hand-rounded shape. Now the cell and the tamabuchi are finished. I'm installing them now. 
I just cut the tamabuchi and fit it in place. I don't secure it initially. I temporarily set it in place and trace the style's shape to the pillar. When tracing the style's shape on the pillar, I make sure to cut both ends about 2 cm and use them. The size doesn't match if I only use a carpenter square. The best way to measure accurately is to trace the actual size. There is a lot of chiseling work in carpentry, but the tokonoma style is the trickiest and most challenging. Because the top and the bottom are chamfered, I can't use a wide chisel that reaches the edge. When I chisel off the top, I use the smallest 3mm chisel to finish it. It's one of the trickiest materials. I make sure the style will be firmly attached to the floorboard before installing it. I temporarily attach them on the workbench. The floorboards are heavy and thick, so installing the style first makes it tough to attach them. My back will be sore, and I might even have a strained back in the worst case scenario. So I temporarily attach them at the stable place, then install the style. As expected, I need to replane the style about 10 times in order to fit the full board. If I were doing this at that site, I would need to carry it 10 times, and I'm sure that would hurt my back. Now, I install it. I install the tamabuchi in the stage. It just needs to be glued into place. I also glue the top and then press down the style from above to attach it. I think I'm applying the right amount of glue, but I always end up with too much. But to spread it over the entire area, I need to apply an amount that will stick out. I'm prepared to wipe it off. I chisel the pillar so that the style's front surface comes to 18mm in depth. The tamabuchi will be aligned with the wide chamfer style surface and the round chamfered corner. Using the wood wedge, I adjust the width of a single hair from the back. I install the joists for the floorboard. They are already plain with an electric plane. Screws and glue will be used to attach the floorboards to these joists. Now, I join two floorboards. Since I plane the edge neatly with an electric planer, they should join easily with a hand plane. But in most cases, floorboards don't join at once.
In addition to using glue, I'll set four bolts inside the boards to join them. I secure it as tight as possible so that it never comes off. It's tricky, but I join them in that way. Now, I drill the hole for the bolt. The drill I use is 10.5mm, slightly wider than the 9mm bolt. I bolt through each board like this and secure them inside the board. The joint is called a Sakura bolt. I use this joint when joining boards horizontally, or when connecting a style to a cut end and making it like a long piece of wood. The disadvantage of this joint is that I need to drill a hole for the washers and nuts. There's no problem if the board is thin, but I need to drill carefully if the board is thin because I can't use it anymore if the hole penetrates the wood. The drill that I'm using now is 30mm. I drill about two thirds of the depth of this wood. When chiseling off the exposed wood from the back, I make sure to set a board on the front side. In this case, I set it alternately and chisel off. As I finish drilling the holes, I finish and join the boards. I can plane it after joining the boards, but I won't be able to reach my hands since it'll be too long. So I plane them one at a time, then fine tune the joint after joining them to finish it. I'm using ordinary wood glue. Quick drying urethan glue will stick well, but there is not enough time since I need to install and tighten the bolt after gluing. When using this joint, wood glue is the best choice since urethan glue dries too quickly. I temporarily clamp both ends and tighten the bolts. Either the holes are too small or my finger is fat. It's hard to tighten these nuts. I screw both ends to secure two bolts. I tighten the bolts after pressing the center and ensuring that it won't shift. No matter how hard I tighten these bolts, they will never be over tightened. So I tighten them as tight as possible. I'm working on the back side of the board so the top side slightly shifts. I will fix that part with a hand plane. Huh. 
Now, I install the floorboard. It's quite heavy since I joined it in one piece. The thickness is 5 cm. I think it weighs a lot. But since there were two of us, we could install it easily. I firmly press the floorboard from the back to the front. I pry it with a large crowbar, then use a wedge to bring it forward. It's most important that the floorboard and style are well attached. I wedge firmly so that the floorboard comes forward. Then, I use a tension rod to apply <laughs> pressure from above. I hate injection this! Now, I have to get under the floor, which I hate. I'm not good at working under the floor. I feel kind of sick when I'm in a narrow space. But I can't avoid this work, so I secure the last fold and screw it to the joists. Then, I glue the ends to prevent cracks. It'll be easier if I apply glue initially, but I can't hold the boards if I do so, so I glue it firmly at the stage. The floorboard is now installed. I make sure to cure the area. Next will be the ceiling. I start installing the ceiling. First, I install crown molding support called Kumo Ita. As the tokonoma is 1.8 meters in width, I set the sampukuzuri, which is a fitting for three hanging scrolls. Sometimes it's only one or two, so both sides of the scroll hangers can move to the left or right. The installation is challenging, but I do it. These scroll hangers on both sides are the trickiest part. I set the long washer on the screen hanger and fit the split pin. The split pin won't fit easily. Next, I secure the screen hanger in the center. I'm using processed cedar boards without knots for the ceiling. It's the same board as the Japanese style room. Installation is more difficult with a smaller ceiling. As I finish installing the ceiling, I install the wall. I install the corner guard before that. There is also a way to install the corner guard later, but I install it first, then the frame and the wall boards.
Now, I'm finishing something in Tokonoma made of Japanese Cypress. I'm nervous about how beautiful and elegant it will finish. I hope this color will last for 3 to 5 years. It'd be nice to see a vase of about 1 million yen displayed in this Tokonoma. That's all for today. Thanks for watching.